Hi everyone, my name is Veronica, and in this video, I'm going to talk about some things I've learned taking the ADEX exam, specifically the PROST and ENDO portion. So just for your reference, I took the ADEX exam in October of 2020, and it was administered by the CETA agency. So first, let's talk about the PROST portion. My first piece of advice to you is to not dilly-dally during setup time. If I could do it all again, I would have started with making my matrices during the start of setup time. And this is because when I was making my putty matrices, I wasn't happy with how they came out. Some of them had voids or for one reason or another, I wanted to remake uh, my putty matrices. But putty matrices take a certain amount of time to set. And so if you don't make your putty matrices at the beginning of set of time, um, you may still be making your matrices once the exam time has started. Um, and you definitely don't want to be spending precious exam time making putty matrices. You want to focus that time on actually, you know, taking the process exam and prepping the teeth you need to be prepping. So, don't wait till, you know, the middle or the end portion of um, setup time to start making your matrices. Make that ahead of time. And while those matrices are setting up, you can be doing other things like, you know, laying out your instruments or preparing your room, etc. The second thing I would have liked to know going into the exam is that the process and endo portion were administered on sim heads in the clinic floor. And um, I took the REB exam a few years ago, and the process and endo portion um, at my school where I took the exam was administered in sim labs. And so the heads in sim labs, they use, sometimes are more flexible in the sense that they can move um, to the right and to the left more, and you can lay the head down at a steeper angle. But the sim heads in a clinic floor you know, the amount that you can lay them back is dependent on, you know, how much the, the dental chair can lay back. And so when I practiced for the ADEX exam, I was practicing on SIMMANS in a SIM lab. And so I was used to, you know, being able to lay the mannequin further back and to lay them to the right more, to the left more. But at the actual exam, because the um, mannequin heads were on you know, were laid on clinic dental chairs, um, it was more restrictive, like there was more restrictive movements, movements um, for the mannequin. And that made prepping the teeth more difficult. I also did not practice with a facial shroud. Um, and I wish I had because during the exam, you know, having that facial shroud in place really limited um, the amount I could see because it was very stiff material and so it required a lot of it required a decent amount of strength to retract the cheeks so that you could adequately do your preparation so if you have access to a facial shroud definitely practice with it and also you know if you're not sure where um, the process and endo portions are being held at your testing facility, just keep in mind that, you know, you you may have some limitations on how much you can adjust the mannequin at the testing site. It may be different from where you're practicing. So now let's talk about the endo portion of the exam. Um, my first piece of advice is to definitely budget enough time for troubleshooting. And in my situation, um, I was working on tooth number eight. The cleaning, shaping, everything went really well. Um, my master cone had, you know, good amount of tuck, tuck back and it was to my working length. Everything was going smoothly. And then I coated the root canal with root canal sealer. And after that, my master cone um, was short. It was short by, gosh, probably two to three millimeters. And I think my mistake was that I, I coated the root canal with too much sealer. But another thing that I had done differently is that I used the 
um, master cones provided from the testing facility instead of master cones that I brought myself. Um, so what I ended up doing is going through the rotary instrument sequence again to remove some of the um, excess sealer. And this time around, I used the master cones that I brought myself to the exam and everything worked out fine. So make sure you give yourself enough time to fix any issues that potentially may arise during the exam. The next couple of points I want to touch on are things that I kind of learned um, when I was preparing for the exam. And the first is that you should know how thick your rubber stopper is. And so this is the situation that I was in. I was, um, when I was practicing, you know, the length of the real T endo teeth are, I think about 25 millimeters. And so my working length is 24 millimeters, right? And I was working with 25 millimeter um, long rotary instruments. And for some reason, I could never get my um, master cone to reach my working length, which is 24 millimeters. And after, you know, some thinking, I realized that it was because my stopper was greater than a millimeter. Um, and so that was preventing, you know, me from adequately cleaning and shaping to my working length depth. So once I changed to a different rubber stopper, a thinner one, then I was able to clean and shape to my working length and my master cone would fit all the way to the 24 millimeter working length. So this is what it looks like close up if you can see. So this is the thicker one and this is the thinner one. So if you have any issues, um, like not being able to clean and shape to your working length um, with a 25 millimeter long um, rotary instrument, just check your rubber stopper. It might just be because your rubber stopper is too thick. Another way to address this issue is to just use longer rotary instruments. I believe they also come in like 30 millimeter lengths. So that would, that would fix the problem. And my next tip for you is to take notes of things that you're unsure of on your manual. Like I said in my previous video, I don't, I don't do root canals at all. Um, and so, I wasn't super confident going into the exam. So what I did was I took notes and, you know, I, I drew pictures of the outline form on my manual. So this is kind of like what it looked like. Um, and I frequently referred to these notes during the exam. Um, and one thing about the outline form for like the molar access or even, even um, the central incisor access is make sure you're in the pulp chamber before you start widening your um, initial outline because it's very easy to you know deviate away from that triangular access form um, so you want to make sure that once you've penetrated into the pulpal chamber and you know if you're still having trouble finding the um, the canals then you want to slowly widen your access don't just you know, wide, don't, don't just start with initial wide access before even penetrating into the pulpal chamber. So that's all I have for you today. Um, I hope this information was helpful to you. If you'd like to hear my experience taking the mannequin based perio and restorative portion, I do have a video on that. So please feel free to refer to it. So um, good luck guys. I hope you guys do well and take care.